Hi, this is Sandra Jala, and welcome to our inaugural session of Sisterly Yours with Sandra. My name is Sandra Reese Jala. I am a retired business executive, an author, and I serve at the exciting West End Baptist Church. And I am so excited that Black Video News is allowing us a forum to where we can talk about women. We want to inspire, motivate, encourage, and collaborate with women. And I am so excited today that our very first guest is Monique Vernon. Hi, Monique. Hello, how are you? We're so happy to have Monique with us this afternoon. Monique is the city manager at Kirby, Texas. And so why don't you tell us, Monique, just a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, I am a native of San Antonio, Texas, proud graduate of Sam Houston High School. I went on to pursue a Bachelor of Arts degree in criminal justice and sociology from Dillard University in New Orleans. And after that time, I returned home and I went to graduate school and studied public administration. Oh, okay. And so you had a so, vision. You had a view of where you were I, going. I did. Okay. And so uh, one of the things that I, I'm really pleased about is the fact that I'm able to now work and serve in and around the community of which I grew up. That is so yes. important yes, because is. you're able to give back because you grew in the community. Yes. You're able to target areas, I'm sure, that are of value mm -hmm. to you and the community. Yes. So what does a day in the life of a city manager look like <laughs> in Kirby, Texas? Ooh. Well, the day in the life of a city manager is extremely unpredictable. Um, <laughs> each day presents a new challenge, um, mm -hmm. but it's very exciting and rewarding. I'm the kind of person who I can never sit down and do the same thing for eight to 10 hours a day. I have to be challenged and I have to have um, something exciting and different. So I think this career field really suits my Sounds personality. Sounds like a win-win, <laughs> right? Just it to does. have that, the dynamics of a day, okay? Yes. And so, I mean, it, you, you handle um, multiple projects and programs. You come in contact with a variety of different people, um, residents in the community. Uh, corporations and other businesses that we work with, other municipalities in the area. So that also gives me um, excitement because I get to work with a lot of different people. A lot people. of different people, mm -hmm. just the diversity yes, it's of it really all. Wonderful. And so if one were aspiring a career as a city manager, mm -hmm. what qualifications are necessary? How did you get to okay. where you are? Well, for me, I stumbled upon this career field. And oh, so okay. I always God, tell working, people that, God, working yeah, in your that life. it's an uh -huh. interesting journey for me. I actually wanted to become an attorney and eventually a judge. Interesting. And so I was on that path, had every intention of going to law school. Um, but as I mentioned, when I graduated from college and returned home, I started working at a law firm during the day. And that was a firm that collects delinquent property taxes for cities and counties. So that exposed me to the administrative side of what cities and counties okay. do. Okay. And that led to an opportunity for me to go work at Bear County. So my introduction to local government was serving as aide to the Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf. And the exciting thing about that is um, the commissioner's court is not a legal entity. Um, they are judging commissioners who make administrative decisions for really? the residents now in the county. that's educational yep. for me. Yep. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe so someone they, else in our audience, that's education. Yeah, I did not know yeah. that. Okay. So they get to make decisions about you know, their, your tax rate and your utilities and your infrastructure improvements. Um, so that was a really, really good place to start. I learned a lot working for the county judge. Um, and during that time, I started going to school at night studying public administration. Okay. And then that really is what sold me on the career field. Wow. And so I, I think it's, it's a good thing um, for me, but for those who are interested in this career field, I think they should start earlier. If I had known then what I know now, right. there are a lot of opportunities out there that I could have been exposed to. Mm -hmm. um, so I take it upon myself to try and share those things with others. Oh, that's great. So yeah. you are giving back so that yeah. people begin to understand what kinds of opportunities mm -hmm. they should be leveraging as they look to. Yes, absolutely. There are mm -hmm. 
opportunities like internships that okay. you can get, um, mm -hmm. not only at city government entities, but at the state level, on the federal level. Mm -hmm. um, those start as early as high school. Mm -hmm. There are um, other scholarship opportunities through public administration organizations like the International City Management Association, the Texas City Management Association, the National Forum for Black Public Administrators. Awesome. So these are groups that I try to expose younger Wonderful. Um, people too, um, that can help put them on that path for this type of career. Awesome, awesome. I understand also that you might be the first African-American? I am. I am. I learned after I was hired in Kirby that I was the first African-American city manager. And um, I am very you know, proud of that. I, um, I don't take it lightly mm -hmm. because I know that I've been afforded some opportunities that can eventually allow someone else to come and follow in my footsteps, right. not only in maybe Kirby, but just in a municipality or another governmental entity mm -hmm. our size or even larger. So um, I really, really try to be a good example uh, for others. I think that's fabulous. In fact, when I think about first and women, I think about people like Rosa Parks mm -hmm. and Shirley Chisholm mm -hmm. yes. and even Michelle Obama. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, myself, as a, a, a corporate executive, mm -hmm. I was the first African American woman mm -hmm. to roll out an international program mm -hmm. for IBM. Mm -hmm. And being first for me led to a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> Can you share with us just a couple of those mm -hmm. challenges that being first kind of brings to the table? Absolutely. Um, so, one challenge is uh, for me, you know. Personally, is not only am I the first African American, but I happen to also be an African American woman Whoa. who is also uh, younger than the average city manager. Mm, and so, um, <laughs> well, one statistic, and this is you know out there, you can hear it through the Texas City Managers Association, is that the average city manager is a sixty-plus-year-old white man. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for someone like me who <laughs> walks into the room. Um, it's eye-opening for those around me. And so that creates a challenge in itself because they are one, wondering, how did you get in this room? Yes. And two, once you get there, they're looking to see how you will perform. Put a pause <laughs> right there. We're going to put a pause right there because I want to talk about that good old boy network. I've had the opportunity yeah. to dig into it. And so we're going to pause for a break and we'll be right back. Okay. I want to talk about All that. Right. Hello, this is Bishop David Copeland of the New Creation Christian Fellowship. Join me and the Clergy Academy as we host a night of celebration Monday, February 24th for the Black Worship Clergy Hall of Fame Dinner. Share with us as we induct Pastor Claudia Day Copeland of the New Creation Christian Fellowship, the very Reverend Father Kevin Faust of the Holy Redeemer Catholic Church. I'm looking forward to see you. Come and be with us. One, six, or a dozen trees. No job is too big or too small. Booker's Tree Services is a certified arborist and state licensed company. On the ground or in the air, we are here to take care of all your tree needs from stump grinding, tree pruning, tree trimming, tree removal, and much more. Call the professionals to help manage your commercial or residential needs. Don't let your trees make you nervous. Call for a free estimate today at Booker Tree Service, 210-657-8085. Forty percent of food in America is never eaten. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat, write, or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? Whew.
Hello, I'm Tony Hendricks, Chief Operating Officer at Lewis Funeral Home. Lewis Funeral Home has been serving San Antonio and surrounding areas for over 100 years. Lewis Funeral Home's ultimate goal is to help those families in their time of need. If your family is ever in need, please feel free to call us at Lewis Funeral Home, 210-227-7281, or check us out on our website at lewisfuneralhome.com. Nothing to do this week? Don't miss another event. Go to blacksinsanantonio.com for our event calendar. The home of the largest business directory in San Antonio with an African American focus. Sign up today for our weekly e-blast and text message alerts. Help us make this a better community. Connect. Empower. Grow. We're back and we're excited. We're talking to Monique Vernon, who is the first African-American woman at the city of Kirby. She is the city manager at the city of Kirby. And we had just started talking about the good old network when you're the first and some of the obstacles and challenges that you run into. And so, Monique, I come back to you. I'm mm -hmm. sure the good old boy network has crossed your path. Can you kind of share some of that with us? And how you handled it. Yes, um, it has. And, you know, as I, I mentioned before, um, being a, a minority in this industry uh, in several different ways, um, it can be challenging. Um, but what I try to do is to always show people in my behavior and in the decisions that I make that I am just as, if not more than qualified for the position that I serve And many in. times we have to be more than qualified, <laughs> right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so if there is, you know, an opportunity out there, um, like to advance my education or advance training, then I take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. I, um, when I was hired, I had the minimum qualifications, which was a master's degree in public administration and the management experience. But one of the things that I was told by the council was that I needed to obtain a public manager certification. Mm -hmm. I found that interesting because the prior Nobody else leadership, had certification. Right, a couple of people prior to me had not had even the right. credentials that I had at the mm -hmm. time, but mm -hmm. I didn't take that as a negative thing. I took it as a growth opportunity for me. So Love I took it. advantage of it and I obtained my public manager certification. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now I'm able to even teach some courses to other city managers who are pursuing that. So that's, you know, one of the ways to kind of meet that challenge, rise to the occasion. When I think the key in what you said there is to have the confidence in who you are, because when Absolutely. I know who I am, there is no mountain, there's nothing that I cannot overcome. Exactly. So it's the confidence. We know we have the credentials. We mm -hmm. have to have more than the credentials just because. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I applaud you yeah. for being Thank able you. to recognize it and be able to walk into it mm -hmm. and all of the joy that it brings. Yes. So I'm thinking right now, though, about a 14 year old girl. Let's say she's in Chicago, Illinois, okay. and she happens to be looking at our broadcast here and she has a, a passion, a desire to want to go into public service. But her teacher has told her mm, that's probably not the career for you. You need to consider mm -hmm. something else. What words of encouragement would you give to that beautiful 14 year old African-American girl? Okay. So I would tell her never let someone else limit your future. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, if she already knows that that's what she wants to do, she's a step ahead because she has declared it. And so now she just needs to take those steps to get there and be confident enough to know that even outside of the classroom, there are others who can support you in those endeavors, whether it's family members, mm -hmm. other local organizations that work with youth, um, to really not allow what one maybe teacher or another person says to you. Right. And continue to push toward your goals. And then one day she can go back and show that teacher, <laughs> hey, this is what I was able to accomplish, no matter what you thought. I love it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a source of inspiration, mm -hmm. not only to her, but to other African-American mm -hmm. women yes. who happen to be serving in public service. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to bring other young African-American 
ladies along to give them the encouragement. You know, I get hard pressed when we say, I got mine, you get yours. Right, that, you, right. know, you run into that yeah. a lot when you meet yes. African-Americans who have achieved. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to applaud you, well, thank you. that yeah. you are taking the time to reach back, to look back. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when you think about a woman in your past, mm -hmm. if you had to think of a woman, a mentor, a woman from history, who would come to mind and why? Okay. So one of my mentors when I was in high school is uh, former Judge Carmen Kelsey. And I met her initially because we attended the same church. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, she was a judge in the juvenile uh, district court for many years. Mm -hmm. And again, I aspired to be an attorney at that time. But one of the biggest things that I learned from her, she allowed me to intern in her court during the summer. Mm -hmm. And it was heartbreaking because one of the things she dealt with was, you know, juveniles in the criminal justice yes. field. Mm -hmm. And you, you would see attorneys and, and others who would count those youth out, especially the minority wow. youth. But one thing about her, she was fair mm -hmm. and impartial, but she also had a heart for trying to um, get these kids back on the right track. And so I think that uh, type of leadership is needed in, yes. in every industry and especially in the legal system. So I admired that about her. And she always encouraged me to you know fulfill my dreams. In fact, when I went to work at Bear County, she recommended me for that job oh, with the fabulous. county judge. So that. that taught me that you know this woman who I admire is looking awesome. out for me. It's important that as I go forward in my career that I do the same for another woman uh, who is aspiring to do the same. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. And that is a footnote just to us as women. Many times with African-American women, we have hangups. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important when we have made or achieved success mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we take the time to look back and to bring someone else along. Exactly. So what is your vision? Where is Kirby going in 2020 as <laughs> okay. city manager? All right. So this past September, I hit five years in the city of Kirby. All right. Congratulations. And, you. and so two main goals that I had um, when I took the job is to, one, improve the infrastructure in the community. It's an okay. older community that was really exclusive for many years mm -hmm. and did not think that eventually they would need to go outside of the community um, mm -hmm. to sustain itself. So for infrastructure, you mean the roads yes. or road the improvements, actual infrastructure the actual infrastructure of the city? Okay. Yes. Right. And so okay. that um, for 2020, I'm really pleased that we're going to see a lot of those projects come to fruition. Um, I was successful in getting a bond project passed um, by the voters so that we could fund the construction of, thank you, awesome. of um, Ackerman Road, which is a, a huge yes, thoroughfare in Kirby. Yes, and some of the feeder streets. So those projects are moving forward. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing that completed this year. Um, and another one was economic development, okay. because even though we're a small landlocked community, mm -hmm. um, we still need to redevelop and even develop some of the underdeveloped areas that we have in Kirby. So I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing that. I feel the year. passion. Do you all feel the passion? <laughs> I feel Monique's passion. And we certainly want to congratulate you mm -hmm. for Thank all you. of the fabulous work you're doing in representing not only women, but African-American women and making a difference in the community, but most importantly, reaching back and bringing someone else along. Oh, so thank Monique, you. Thank you so much for yeah, being with us this it. afternoon. And this is Sandra signing out for Sisterly Yours. We look forward to bringing women to you each and every week. And with that, good day.